done. Bet. Huh? Ah! As mayor of the universe, I award C.C. Cuckoo Plots as the biggest lover of Christmas in all the galaxies. Your love of this holiday is unrivaled by anyone. Yes. Thank you all so much for this award. I am very flattered by it. It is so wonderful to know that no one in the entire solar system anywhere else loves Christmas as much as I. What was that? Well, it sounds like the light barrier being broken and the speed of time being warped, and every conceivable ozone layer being shattered. I win. When life gives you lemons, you say, fuck lemons, where's my Christmas? It's the greatest time of the year, and we're once again gonna celebrate all the merriment it has to offer. The snow, the hot chocolate, whatever the hell I'm looking at here. Christmas has everything. And as part of celebrating the holidays, we also had to look at the weirdest parts of it. <laughs> no, not Patrick Stewart wearing a singing elf hat. You can watch that later. I'm of course talking about Inspector Gadget Saves Christmas! It's a weird list of people who have saved Christmas, isn't it? Ernest, the Berenstain Bears, the Glow Friends, Elmo, Mater from Cars, Diego, the Bratz Babies, Escape Mental Ward Patients, Felix the Cat. It kind of feels like anyone can save Christmas, it's not particularly hard. So why not throw Inspector Gadget into the mix? Based on the hit kid show about a bumbling inspector as ignored prodigy of a niece, the special aired in December of 1992, just six years before its cinematic follow-up still awaiting an apology tour. No! I gotta get out of here. That man was nominated for an Oscar. The great thing about this special is, it's pretty much exactly what you think it's gonna be. The first few images that pop in your head when you hear this title is 100% what it consists of. It's ridiculous in the ways only Inspector Gadget can provide. So let's go, go Gadget, dollar store cash in! This is Inspector Gadget Saves Christmas! We start off outside the incredibly well-advertised Santa's workshop. You know, you're sending mixed signals with a wooden sign yet electric lettering. Why don't you just put this on there while you're at it? Santa wakes up his workers with his synthesized trumpet playing. A man of many random talents. And he wakes him up again by singing because apparently the trumpet did nothing. Rise and shine, elves! Ho, 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 ho! Rise and shine, he says, from our elfin beds. Did they just say they're effing beds? Rise and shine, he says, from our elfin beds. Guys, kids are watching. Okay, the swear jar's over there! Christ, does your music need a parental warning? The lyrics get even more grim the further you listen to them. Man, Santa runs a pretty unforgiving setup! Imagine these words being spoken instead of sung! Yeah, die another day! Making toys for Santa isn't work, it's play! Play is work, work is play. So after we realize Santa shanghai the Keebler elves through some sort of illegal cloning ring, our main villain, Dr. Claw, enters the picture. <laughs> yes, this is really happening. Dr. Claw is dressing up like Santa. I am not prepared for this kind of silly. I, I, maybe if I watch this. Okay, okay, let's try it again. I, Dr. Claw. 
Nope, not working! <laughs> I have so many questions. First of all, wow, who knew Dr. Claw was so short? I guess sitting down so much just gives you the shin legs of Hank Hill's father. Second, his arms seem to have gotten pretty scrawny, don't you think? Does he eat carbs? Third, what exactly is his scheme again? I, Dr. Claw, will ruin Christmas myself and the world will blame Santa Claus. <laughs> That's a weird plan, buddy. What do you care if you ruin Christmas? Or even if Santa gets blamed? Your focus used to be robberies, terrorism, obtaining power. What does making Santa look lazy accomplish? Santa's name will be Slash. His reputation will be ruined. <laughs> <laughs> and I will have the honor of having done that. No wonder you kept losing to an eight-year-old. Your criminal plans center around what eight-year-olds care about. You're making this guy look credible now. How dare you? So Dr. Claw uses his mind-controlling hat on the elves, because this is our reality for the next half hour, and operates a hook crane to lift Santa. Get me down! Jack Skellington, I told you I'm done with this shit! Only one person can stop me now. Agents will stop him first. As soon as I figure out how to stop the snow from looking like streams of urine. Seriously, are a bunch of snowmen taking a piss up there? Thus we see Inspector Gadget at his house as mad agents try to get him. Look at this. They couldn't even get the original Inspector Gadget theme song. Inspector Gadget. Inspector Gadget. Oh come on, the theme song was like half the show! What's this shit they're playing? Oh. We're clearly making this up as we go. They of course failed to stop him, most likely because of his off-screen portal gun. How'd he... what? As Inspector Gadget is given his next assignment from the Chief, once again undercover. But where's the real Santa? He could be in trouble. Here, your assignment will explain. Boy, the Chief is sounding like Clint Eastwood after a million marbles. I know. Now get off the phone. Do you feel jolly, punk? Suspicious activity at North Pole suggests mad plot by Dr. Claw against the real Santa Claus. You know, the thought occurs to me that we're rather Claw-centric. Have we ever thought about going after ISIS? Drug lords? The people who make the Medea movies? I'll get to the bottom of this. <laughs> You know, this has happened so much, it's actually starting to feel good. So Gadget, being the caring uncle that he is, of course brings his niece Penny along, who... With Santa Claus and his elves. Haha, <laughs> tough break, huh, Brain? ...is clearly voiced by a different actress. But come on, how could you replace Cree Summer? She's like a voice acting giant! She was perfect for Penny Gadget! How dare they get a little kid to voice a little kid! What's wrong with you? Well, maybe her acting's so good it's a fitting replacement. This must be where Dr. Claw hid Santa's real toys. Okay, well maybe she's popular from the other thing she's been in. Like, Lania Quigley's horror workout. I have no idea why they chose this person. Oh look, Uncle Gadget, Santa's village. It's a Christmas dream come true. If only we could fix the reception. Gadget falls in the snow, but he quickly gets out with a bit of comedy. If you get my drift. <laughs> <laughs> I invented a laser watch. This humor's beneath me. So we saw how easily Dr. Claw snuck in. I wonder if they beefed up security at all. Do they even lock their doors? Aren't you even afraid those elves might be kidnapped by Willy Wonka when you're not looking? Gadget, of course, goes to greet who he thinks is Santa. Ah, uh, Gadget. You're always welcome at the North Pole. Why, Santa, you're sounding charmingly satanic today. My chief has a silly idea that the notorious Dr. Claw has infiltrated the North Pole. Ho, ho, ho. Okay, I'm just calling it right here. I think Dr. Claw should be our new Santa. Dr. Santa Claw. Hearing him say ho, ho, ho is my everything. Christmas would be amazing if he was Santa. Just imagine him greeting kids at the mall. I want a dolly, and a gumball, 
itchy scent. What you need is a trip to my fire pit. <laughs> what do you want? I want a puppy. Puppies suck. Get a kitten. I hate kittens. Kittens are all stupid and boring. How dare you? <laughs> Dr. Claw? What's up? I can't help but notice all the children you're torturing in horrific ways. It's not my fault. Discipline is dead. Dr. Claw, just exactly what are you a doctor of? Pediatrics. I have a hard time believing that, sir. I have a hard time believing your face. Now that is not called for. Oh, piss off, you pansy. <laughs> when will they realize any one of these kids could invent a computer book and ruin all our schemes? I'm just ahead of my time. He starts to put together that something might be up. Hi! I'll bet you have some great Santa stories, Mr. Elf. Interesting sound effect choice. Did he have flashbacks when he was on the ship from Alien? Nice talking to ya! There's something weird going on here, Brain. Yeah, there's something weird about these enchanted elves, magical talking dog! So of course Penny, once again, has to save the day while Gadget just makes things worse. God, I wish she got the credit she deserves. I mean, I know it's good to be humble and everything, but her picture would be placed above J. Edgar Hoover's by this point! So don't you think Brain would get a little pissed off seeing how he's always the one who has to save Gadget while she calmly snoops around? Why does he always get the short end of the stick? Come in, Brain. You follow Uncle Gadget. I'm gonna find out what's going on. What next? So Gadget inspects the factory as well as the toys. Or rather, sings about it. On the first phase inspection, good Santa showed to me a mountain bike with gadget training wheel. Do his vocal cords have one bar? What's up with the audio? How the hell did his voice go from this? Go, go, gadget magnifying glass. To On the first phase inspection, good Santa showed to me. For crying out loud, I think he literally phoned this in. Was he just sitting at his home like, I don't to come down to the studio. I'm too busy seeing who played or worse me. I'll just record it in my garage. I hear the acoustics there are amazing. Would you believe semi-amazing? On the fifth phase inspection, good Santa show to me. A song that goes on too long because we need some filler and it's public domain so we don't have to pay for it. And a jet propelled inspector gadget. Gadget is tossed into the same holding cell as Santa as, wait a minute. I know that's where Santa's being held, it's like a special dungeon so he can't get out and everything, but... Why does Santa have one of those in the first place? This workshop is getting creepier and creepier. Maybe Dr. Claw is more of a hero than we gave him credit for. Go, go, Gadget interrogation device. Yeah, Inspector Gadget might have the right idea this time. Was it Dr. Claw? <laughs> <laughs> oh, okay, that, that's a little weird. Yes, Dr. Claw. <laughs> you expect me to believe that? <laughs> Why do I get a feeling this is going to be a sequel to the movie Tickled? Is there a Santa getting tickled fetish? Don't tell me if there is. So far, you failed to shake like a bowl full of jelly. Okay, this special needs an R rating, because I swear he said shit like a bowl full of jelly. You failed to shake like a bowl full of jelly. Those Metamucil cookies I left out every year always did the trick. Your eyes don't twinkle, your dimples aren't merry, and this ratty fake beard wouldn't fool anyone. Well, this is horrific. Is this what you were expecting, kids? Watching your childhood icon get the shit beat out of him by law enforcement? Fa la 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 la. Gadget's is not really doing much saving Christmas, is he? He's more Guantamoing Christmas. Very Christmas, you filthy animal. Meanwhile, Penny has to figure out what's going on with as little conviction as possible. He's in jail. He's in a jail cell? That's bad. <laughs> God damn it, kid! He found the real Santa Claus? That's good! Oh, you're turning one of the greatest child heroes into a leapfrog preschool game! Can you spot what's good and bad? That's good! That's 
That's bad. That's good. That's bad. <laughs> Uncle Gadget put a dog collar on Santa? Okay, this is getting a little weird for me. The tickling, the dungeon, and the effing elves were one thing, but this is a kid show! Inspector Gadget escapes and helps Claw load up his sleigh. Here you go. Uh, I'm sorry, are you sure Gadget's not the villain here? But haven't you forgotten Dunderhead Blitzkrieg and the other reindeer? I'll take care of everything myself. You know, I really should fire my strategist if this is the person I'm losing to all these years. But Brain and Penny try to get the elves back to their normal selves. Especially after they've mastered teleportation. Okay, is Scotty just traveling back in time and randomly beaming people? But they find the control and return them to their usual swearing selves. Jingle bells, elfin bells. You are all getting soap for dinner. But Claw isn't done yet. Too little, too late, Gadget. Oh, come on, even his sleigh is cooler. Why can't he be Santa? If Tim Allen gets three movies, why can't he? When I deliver these defective toys, you can't stop me from ruining Christmas. Wow, for the first time ever, man, can't I actually listen to what I said out loud? I'm a buffoon. Ho, ho, ho! Go, go, Santa Reindeer! Ha, ha, I just quoted a man who tortured me for hours. Insanity one, my mental health zero. The reindeer's antlers somehow dig through an iceberg of solid mass. Steroid oats. And sink Dr. Claw's plan into the ocean. I'll get you. Look at the blank stares on those elves. They've seen things. Things they can never explain nor wish to understand. Just move on. Never look back. I don't know what? how you did Where it, he come from? but you saved Christmas for the children of the world. No time for that, Chief. Christmas awaits. But I've been waiting for hours somehow in the sky. It's like the Bermuda Triangle of Air Pockets. So Santa gets his sleigh going and even invites Gadget to come along with him. Jingle bells, jingle bells, jingle all the way. How fun it is to ride a Santa's open sleigh. Yeah, all right, we're high enough. Let's toss him. Wow! with the claws! So that was Inspector Gadget Saves Christmas. It's pretty much exactly what you'd expect from it. It's silly, ridiculous, and doesn't make a lick of sense, but that's part of what you expect when you watch Inspector Gadget. If you hear the title Inspector Gadget Saves Christmas and you have any interest in it whatsoever, it's probably gonna give you what you're looking for. Gadget acting like a dummy, Dr. Claw trying to take over the North Pole, brain getting hurt in the process. The only thing that always sucks, like I said before, is Penny always getting the shaft. I hate that. She's the one doing all the hard work. She should get the credit. It's not fair, I tell ya. It's not fair! Can we just one day see Penny get exactly what she deserves? What? What is that? What? Greetings, people of the world. For years you've been under the assumption that my uncle, Inspector Gadget, was a respected detective for the Metro City Police Force. This was all just a cunning ruse. Did you really think such a bumbling dick with the voice of Don Adams could accomplish super impossible feats and still be human? For God's sake, he has a fucking helicopter in his head. And yet nobody questions where the hell his brain is. I created the Gadget 9000 prototype, and you dumbasses fell for it. And now that I've created artificial life, I shall unleash it on an unsuspecting world. Your tanks and stealth bombers are no match for the hellfire I'm about to unleash. Do you know how difficult it was to constantly be in the shadows as that incompetent shit got all the credit? I compressed the entire internet into my textbook, taught a canine how to simulate human speech, and created the Apple Watch before Steve Jobs was out of his mother's basement. Give me another ten years, I would have created a fucking Matrix, complete with a Keanu Reeves that can actually act. You thought the real enemy was mad, but they were merely a distraction. As long as Gadget and Claw fought, the police were always occupied. For you see, I was foiling Mad's plan so that when the time came, I could seize control of your governments, your thermal nuclear warheads, your lives! I am Penny, mother of gadgets, breaker of brains! I will take back the honor that was stolen from me and destroy those who stand in my way! Isn't that right, Uncle Gadget? You 
Wowzers. Penny for your thoughts, bitches. Does that work? Yeah, but you were supposed to just say, Ooh, I don't like that Uncle Gadget. Yeah, not anymore. Okay. Hey guys, Doug Walker here doing the charity shout out. This week we are doing the Midwest Food Bank. This charity works to stop hunger and poverty by gathering and distributing food donations to over 900 nonprofit local organizations and disaster sites. Based on the data from Charity Navigator, the firm has achieved the highest rating for fiscal responsibility and excellence for six consecutive years. For fiscal 2014, of the $63.221 million raised, 99.30% went directly towards delivering its services and only 0.50% went towards administrative expenses. That's amazing. If you look at their site or their YouTube page, you can see for yourself all the great work that they do. They work so hard in making sure that people this holiday season don't go hungry. There's so many people that need food in the world and these are the people that make it possible that they don't go to bed starving. It's a wonderful organization and definitely deserves your attention. This Christmas, when so many people are in a charitable mood, definitely keep this one in mind. Open your hearts and take a look.